I've been trying to make this video for the past hour. But, hi guys, it's Morgan with Winter Subaru. I'm gonna go ahead and go over some hidden features on the 24 Outback that I feel like not a lot of people know about. Um, I just struggled getting into the car. <laughs> But I feel like there's a lot of features in these cars that people typically don't go over when they purchase them. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for you today. So I also have another video on the Outbacks um, talking about like seat positioning, memory to the key. Um, you can actually program each key that you have to a different seat position um, and stuff like that. There's other stuff in that video too, but if you'd like to check that out, feel free. I will leave a link to that down in the description. But for now, let's go ahead and get started on this car. I guess I should also introduce myself to the people who don't know who I am. I am Morgan Johnson. I'm a redelivery specialist and salesperson here at Winter Subaru in Dover, Delaware. So if you have any questions, you are more than welcome to leave them in the comments and I'll try to make a video about it or just respond to you. Um, but also if you're new, don't forget to like and subscribe. So that way you can keep up with all this content. I'm also gonna be making Volkswagen videos. I know I keep saying this every time, but I will be making Volkswagen videos eventually. I just wanna make sure I cover my grounds on Subarus first. Um, so if you have any request for that leave them down below as well and now let's get started <laughs> okay so most of the stuff i'm going to talk to you guys about today is going to have to do with the infotainment system um so one thing i commonly get asked about is actually these little widgets up here is actually what they're called people are like oh well the acceleration or the angle doesn't really matter to me is there a way that i can change those and yes, you absolutely can. So you can actually just click the easiest way is just to click right into them. And then you will select whichever one you want to replace. So for example, if I want to replace the acceleration one, then I would much rather see like my water temperature here. And maybe instead of angle, I would rather see my oil temperature here. That's how you can do that. So now when I click out of here, you'll see it at the top there. It shows my water temperature and my oil temperature. Um, another thing I get asked about while we're on this screen is the quickest way to turn the heated seats off. Um, not a lot of people know about this, but let's say I have it on the third or the highest setting rather. You can actually, most people think you just have to tap it to get it to turn off. But if it's on any of these settings, if you actually just hold it down, it will turn it off just like that. So you don't have to sit there and touch it a bunch of times. Um, and in the same breath while we're down here, a lot of people um, don't know this, but you can actually change this AC button. So if you'd rather it be something else, you can do that. So you would go into your settings here. Then under settings, you're gonna scroll down until you see climate control. And then here, customize climate button. You can change that so that it says max AC, auto, recirculation, sync. So let's just say I put it on sync now see down here it changes it I'm gonna go ahead and change it back <laughs> I don't want to get yelled at but that's how you do that there then also on the home screen um, you can move around these apps just like you can on your phone so let's say for example um, Starlink is grayed out so it's kind of pointless right I'd rather be able to see my auto vehicle hold which is much more useful I think and should be on the first screen uh, that's the one that holds in the brake for you. I have another video on that too. You guys can go back and watch that. So I'm going to go ahead and hold this down. And then, so then I'm editing. I'm going to go ahead and go over. And I'm going to take Starlink actually, and I'm going to put it over on the second screen because it's kind of useless to me. So then I hit the home button. And there you go. Now my auto vehicle hold is there and my car info is still there too. So... The other thing I like to talk about is um, people often ask what, um, on this small screen, what this MPG is and why it moves. So this obviously stands for miles per gallon. So while you're driving, you'll notice it moving. If it's more towards the negative, that means you're getting worse gas mileage. And when it's going towards the positive, like you'll notice when you're braking and stuff like that, that means you're getting better gas mileage. Um, some people don't think it's really useful. So you know you can actually change that. So if you go into your settings here, and then we're gonna go under meter screen, it's gonna be under general, um, meter screen. And then right here, meter information screen. 
here is where you can change that. So instead of the eco gauge, which is what it will default to, you can actually set it to the outside temperature or clock, the compass or the gas range. So if let's say the gas range um, is something that's more useful, you can go ahead and click that. And now you'll see that it has changed up here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click out of that. Um, let's see. One more thing I also get asked about a lot is because of the EyeSight cameras, where should I be putting my Easy Pass? And your EyeSight cameras are actually up top here, so they're actually more integrated into the wind windshields now. Um, the newer 2024s, some of the older models, they were cut off, so if you put the Easy Pass in front of them, that can actually disable your, um, your EyeSight technology, so like your safety features, like your pre-collision braking and stuff like that. Um, so my recommendation is always to maybe like put them up in a top corner or something like that I think that's always the best thing to do so that way your technology is not being shut off the rest of the stuff that I like to talk about is actually on the outside of the vehicle but there is one thing I have to touch on in order to talk about what's on the outside of the vehicle and that is the sensor that's on the back of the vehicle so you can do a hands-free gate um, you can actually turn that sensor off and that button is gonna be down here so this button right here, the off, if that is out like it is now, that means it's turned on. But once you push it in, that turns it off. So once we go to the back of the car, we're going to actually put our hand in front of the Subaru Star Cluster and that will be hand-free uh, open gate. But you do have to have your key fob on you. So let's go back there and I will show you what that looks like. I apologize. It is a little noisy out here today by the traffic. Um, but here is the, uh, the back of the Outback. So this little star cluster here, once I put my hand in front of it because I have that button pushed out, it is active. So once I put my hand here, my key is actually in my pocket. Hit this like this. There you go. Beautiful. And just like that. There's one more thing I like to talk about back here. Let me go ahead and close this gate. Is that you will see, I don't know if you saw it, but there is also a little button down here that not a lot of people know about, and that's actually for pin access. So if you were to like lose your key or something like that and you couldn't get into your car, um, let's say for some reason you lost both fobs, you can actually set a pin back here and you can actually unlock your doors with that pin. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that now. One thing I forget to mention with the pin is that it has to be a five digit pin. Um, so that's one, numbers one through nine. So you can make it whatever combination you'd like and every push of the button is going to represent that number. So if I wanna do three, I'm gonna push it three times. If I wanna do one, I'm gonna do one and vice versa. Okay, so to set the pin, what you're gonna wanna do is you're going to lock the car. I'm gonna do it until the alarm goes off, but you don't have to. Okay, so <clears throat> now what you're gonna have to do, I would make sure that you're somewhere in a quiet place because <laughs> I am not and it is very hard to hear, um, but you're gonna wanna have to hear beeps. So I'd recommend standing on this side of the vehicle on the passenger side because you can hear the beep a little bit better. And if you can park next to a wall, it does help, um, but I'm in a very loud place and I'm really struggling with this. <laughs> but um, what you're going to do, it's kind of hard to show with both hands. I'm gonna go ahead and hold down the lock button and then after that, I'm gonna hold down the lock button and then hold down this um, pin button. So let me do that first, I'm gonna hold this down. Now I'm gonna hold down the pin until I hear a beep, it starts beeping. Can you hear that? Okay, so I have 20 seconds to hit the unlock button, just like that, and then the beeping stops. And then each press is going to be a number. So. It'll be a number and then a beep to confirm. So I'm gonna do one, beep, two, beep, one, beep, two, beep, and then one. Okay, so now it's set. That is all that I have for you guys today. I hope you learned something new about your Outback. If you have any more questions about your Outback or any other Subaru model or Volkswagen model, feel free to leave them down below. I hope this was very helpful and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.